Oh boy. If there was ever a time where I would really need a script, it would be now. But I've procrastinated too much on this already, so let's just jump right into it. Hi there, my name is Sandrian Blue, or just Sarah, whatever floats your goat. If I sound disorganized, that's because I am, because honestly, I'm more doing this video as an update video because you haven't heard of me for quite a while now, and probably even longer depending on how much I'm gonna sit down to edit this audio and the actual video footage, so yeah. That's gonna be fun. Quick thing before I go into the topics of the video, the speed paint you're looking at in front of you is also uploaded as the speed paint only, so if you don't like my voice or are not interested in anything I'm talking about, just go to the iCard and it should be there and should link you directly to the actual speed paint. But if you're here to hear my voice, I... Very much appreciate that. Uh, I don't know when that was, but it was like maybe a month ago when I made a community post and wanted to ask you all what you wanted me to talk about in my next video. And one of you said that you wanted to maybe hear about my experiences in art school. Now, I've only been in art school for a month now, so it's not a lot to talk about. So I thought, hey, I've made a speed paint of the Steven Universe movie, might as well talk a little bit about it. Here's the timestamp of when I talk about the Steven Universe movie, and then the timestamp of anything else I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, so in case you don't know what Steven Universe is, which would be a big surprise, considering that you're watching a speed paint of the movie, but Steven Universe is about a alien race that is mostly um, about aliens that are represented by a gem or a mineral, I guess, like pearls, garnets, um, amethysts, and so on. And Steven is like a hybrid between a human and a gem. Honestly, that's as far as I want to really go into the synopsis. I'm not gonna look up a synopsis for this, but I'm also not ready to fuck anything up already again like last time. <laughs> the movie itself, just FYI, plays like two years after the final episode ended. And I don't really want to go too much into details of the movie. I have pretty much forgotten a lot about it already. But there are still a few things that I want to talk about. Mainly Steven, Spinell, and the music in the movie. So Steven himself, I honestly like how it is very obvious that Steven has changed really as a person and actually does show signs of maturity. Well, as mature as you can imagine a 16 year old to be. Also, next Steven is best Steven. You can fight me on this if you want, but next Steven is best Steven. Shut up. Uh, I like how the movie kind of began like a princess fairy tale, and it's kind of funny how it just started with Steven. Everyone believes in Steven. If I fucked up the um, tone, I'm not gonna apologize for it. <laughs> because it honestly wasn't that great of a song. <laughs> but it was kind of nice to have like this nostalgic feel of Disney fairy tale intros and you know what, I kind of liked it. And the beginning song in general, I really liked it. It kind of gave a good idea where we are right now, what has happened so far, and it gives a little bit of a push into your memory what has happened so far, so you're not completely lost, in case you haven't seen the series in a while. So, I thought that was neat. And now Spinel herself, Obviously, she was kind of just created just for the movie, so I don't think there's any foreshadowing that you could pick up from the mo from the main series that she existed before. So she's just completely invented, but honestly, for a character that was specifically only invented for the movie, I feel like they did a good job at developing her. You get a quick idea what she's about, you have a good idea who she is, why she's mad at everyone, and even in the beginning you already have like a feeling that Pink Diamond has made some fuck-ups <laughs> once again. And you know what, I like how they directly address that, how it is not even a big surprise anymore that Pink Diamond did this to Spinel. And <laughs> I just love how Steven reacts to it, like, yeah, we 
we get it. Spinel in general, I feel like has been a good inclusion of Steven Universe. I really hope she appears again in the other season. But at the same time, it's like, should she appear again? Like, can you possibly top the first appearance of hers? Also, I really don't want her to become like Lapis and Peridot, who were really interesting characters, but then kind of got pushed to the side at the near end of it. And I kind of wish they had kind of more screen time, I guess, or more important moments I guess because I feel like they would have been important and I feel like in the next season if Spinel appears there again it's gonna happen the same way and I don't know if I like that idea <laughs> What I really, really enjoyed about this movie is the animation. In case you have not been informed about the memes about the show, it is very common in Steven Universe, at least the main series, to have a lot of moments in the series where the models are completely off from the way they were drawn before. Like, they don't have a proper model sheet for some reason, and they're all different. Like, I know why it's the way it is, because there's always a different lead artist, but still, I feel like it shouldn't happen in a professional animation studio. But in this movie in particular, the animation is honestly really good. Like, before it was, you know, a serialized animation, kind of has to go back down with the animation a little bit, but it was always kind of known that Steven Universe wasn't always known uh, with the greatest animation. Except for, of course, the last episode with, how is it called? James Baxton or something? Something like that. But in this movie, especially on Spinel, her animation with the rubber hose limbs is just fucking amazing. Like, I was so hyped to see the movie after I saw uh, the scene of her singing other friends on Twitter. The amount of movement it put into her was really, really amazing, especially her moving around the scythe. Or scythe. Scythe? 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 How do you say that? <laughs> now, story-wise, it's okay. It's fine. It's... It's Steven Universe. I don't know what else to say about this. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but they didn't exactly put anything new into the scene. But it was definitely still enjoyable to a greater extent. The one only problem I have with the movie are a few of the songs in the movie. Now, there are some real bangers in the movie, and especially Other Friends is like fucking amazing, but as I've seen someone else mention on Twitter, and I completely agree with that. There are too many songs. Just way too many. I know it's supposed to be like a musical or something, but there are just a few songs you could tell that they just kind of put it into just fill in time. Get what I mean? It just feels like some of the songs were unnecessary. But then there are also other songs that I really think are really pretty, like Drift Away or that one song that honestly, I want to talk about the scene a little bit because it's the first time I watched it, it just paralyzed me for a second and made me scream, what? multiple times. <laughs> there is a scene in Steven Universe, well, the movie, where Steven fuses with his dad. Honestly, I like the idea of, of them both fusing, like they're family, right? So they had to fuse at some point or something, right? But I don't think that Greg, as a bald and really plus-sized kind of guy who got himself some nice, long, fuzzy, probably dirty hair, and a little 16-year-old kid make Elvis Presley. Yeah, what was the fusion called? Steg? I saw someone say that they missed an opportunity to call him Mr. Multiverse, and I'm honestly mad that they didn't call him that. <laughs> but yeah, Independent Together is a really really pretty song. In general, the songs in that movie are pretty good. There are some, again, that seem like they're more placeholders for the movie, and then Sadie's songs are just fucking awful. Maybe I'm the only person, but for the one character that is supposed to be known as the one who can sing, her songs and her voice are just impossible to listen to without getting a mental breakdown. I'm sorry. Maybe it's just me. It might be just in my opinion. You can tell me in the comments how wrong I am, but do you all actually like the songs of Sadie and the Sadie Killers or whatever they were called? Because I hate all of those songs. I just wish they would just abandon that concept. It's... they're just awful. I'm sorry. 
Maybe it's because the voice actress of Sadie tries too hard to keep the, her voice consistent, but it just doesn't sound good. It's been a problem also in the main series. I just don't like Sadie's voice whatsoever at all, as a singing voice at least. All in all, the movie was really great. I liked the conflict of it. Didn't like Sadie. What the hell was Steg? Songs were great. Spinel is awesome. And that's the end of the discussion. So now let's talk a little bit about my experiences in art school. First of all, I want to correct myself on a certain aspect because technically I'm not going to art school yet. I'm more going to a preparatory school for art schools or more schools that are focused on design or artistic aspects. So technically seen, I'm not going to college in a normal sense because the classes I'm going to are not filled with just 20 year olds like myself. They're actually also teenagers like 16 and 17 year olds. And no, it's not because they're like special children that got there because of their smartness. It's just literally a course you can go to after like middle school or something and start having this year in that preparatory school to get yourself a kind of diploma so that the art schools like the proper art schools can know that you have at least one year of experience in the field of art and design so what I'm going to talk about is more the perspective of how it is to be in a preparatory school rather than being in a proper college I'll be honest the first time I got to school I actually got really nervous at how things are gonna go especially when it came to the aspect of socializing because I've mentioned it before high school was kind of a socializing hell for me but in that school it was kind of easier to talk to people because of you know art related stuff and I was really happy in the first three days of me being there because I had the, already the feeling that I was in the right place for it once except that in the first week I got sick I got so heavily sick that only three days into the week I had to just stay at home to get healthy for the entire year that I had between high school and the preparatory school I didn't get sick or at least not a lot and not heavily but exactly on like the first day i went outside to the world my nose started dripping my throat started itching and my fever started going up and by like tuesday already i was just almost dying <laughs> and i really didn't want to go and stay home which is like the opposite of usually what you would want to do when you're sick for school right <laughs> I was really scared that the moment I missed those two days, my chances of getting friends was just gone. But luckily, the moment I got back, things went pretty well again. Now, to the art school experience by itself, except for that little hiccup, it's been actually pretty great. The subjects are really diverse. I've done things in that class I haven't done ever before and it's really interesting especially in photography because a lot of things that she's teaching us in photography can be applied to illustrative art as well about the composition about the golden line or however it's called the grid system the lighting system how you're supposed to make sure that there's enough contrast in the picture and it's really interesting to look at okay I'm not the best at photography I can already tell you I'm not gonna become a professional photographer it, it's just I, I can't for the life of me get a proper normal not blurry image so yeah that's out of the question but it's been generally really fun and especially taking pictures with friends and stuff somewhere around the school or even outside we go outside a lot in that school which I honestly feel think is really good like really good except for software which is also a class and I'm not sure if I'm really enjoying that class because on one side I think it's really useful to know the basics of Photoshop and stuff but Photoshop is fucking awful like Holy shit, I remember there was once a Tumblr post talking about how every artist is classified by the programs they use and I remember somewhere saying on Clip Studio Paint, people who watched anime and absolutely hate Photoshop use that program and at first I always thought that was kind of stupid but the moment I started using Photoshop, God, I just 
lost my mind. Now this has probably more to do with the way I set up my desk because my tablet monitor is on my left actually and my laptop is on front of me but I'm also right-handed. Why do I have this set up? I don't know, it just has been this way forever actually. Because of that setup, I actually don't use shortcuts, like almost never. And so every time I go, want to like zoom stuff or look at more stuff and stuff, I actually look for the buttons themselves. And in Photoshop, that is pretty much impossible to do. Everything is in completely different places. I always, always have to look for where the stuff is and the amount of shortcuts for every single damn thing makes me go crazy. Like, holy shit, why are there so many shortcuts for every single fucking thing? Now, you can call me an idiot in Photoshop if you want. Fine, I can live with that, but it's just way too complicated for someone who has never used it. Okay, I've probably been one of those people who had a better time with it than most people because Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop aren't all that different. Sure, Photoshop has a few additional things that Clip Studio obviously can't do, but it is very similar in a lot of aspects. So there are a few things that I was already familiar with, how the layers work, how you have to look for the color balances and all that. That's fine by me, I can handle that. But the one thing that annoys me the most is that how hidden different pencils and brushes are that you have to look for. Like that's just absolutely terrible. Now, if I took my time to look through everything in Photoshop, maybe I can organize myself better, but this stuff should be more obvious to find, if you get what I mean. Although Photoshop is still better than using InDesign. Holy shit is InDesign complicated. Not only is it complicated, you have to look for so much stuff for so many things and it's just a mess. And our teacher doesn't make it any better because he likes to go very quickly. But there's also a really dumb habit I have, which is whenever I see the teacher doing something, I'll try to do something related to that. I'll try to do the same thing but then I'll get distracted by hey what if I can do this as well and then suddenly I'm stuck with something I don't know how to remove and then suddenly when I finally get it removed I realize hold on why are we in step 550 already okay that one that complaint is my fault but still ugh. And at first I thought this was only me, but then I've heard other people talk about how InDesign is awful, so I know for a fact that my reasonings are not invalid. <laughs> but I think the most unnecessary program we ever had to deal with is Bridge. Bridge is literally just a program that lets you look at photos. That's all it does. It's the most unnecessary app I've ever seen. Now, why do you need a separate program from Adobe to pay thousands of dollars just to look at photos? Seriously. Okay, I don't know how much Bridge costs, but as far as I am aware of with Adobe programs, this shit's expensive. The one other thing that I have some trouble with is painting, but that has more to do with me just not knowing the medium. Then there was 3D modeling class, which was not a bad experience, but the teacher used that kind of as an opportunity so that we would go outside to use our models for the climate strike that has been going on. And look, there's nothing wrong with the strike. I think that's a great thing to do. But for a school project, really? <laughs> We are making models, not learning how to go on strikes and demonstrations. Just saying. The one actually interesting part about the 3D modeling class is that our teacher is actually non-binary. Now, let's not treat people like that as exotic animals or something. They're people too. I'm not trying to like show off or something, but it was just interesting to have a teacher like that for the first time because in Switzerland you don't really hear about that stuff all that much or see people like that or at least they don't mention it openly. And so it was interesting to see just this kind of environment where we had to actually kind of pay attention to what we say. 
Now, in that school, we are allowed to use the informal way of talking to people. In case you don't know, in German, there is the formal and informal way to address someone, and we are allowed to do it for uh, informal. But even with that little thing, using pronouns in German for someone who's non-binary is getting a little bit confusing, especially because some teachers say, oh, you can go talk to him, and then others say, why don't you talk to her? And then it gets even more confusing because there is no equivalent of they in German, at least not that you can use as a singular pronoun. Now, obviously, this is more problem when you talk about someone and not directly to someone, because then no one gives a crap about that, but you get what I mean. It, it gets a little bit confusing. <laughs> Germany, get on that, please. I don't want to feel bad anymore to accidentally call the teacher she or he. Please. All in all, the school's great, but I have to slowly think about a plan B. In case you don't know what plan A is, I want to become a comic artist, or a bit more broader term would be becoming an illustrator. And I think it's good that it is a bit more of a broad term, so that if I want to look for an office job, maybe I can work for a company to illustrate stuff, so that's also a good thing. But the problem is, becoming an illustrator, at least in Switzerland, is really hard. Especially the school I need to go to to actually get that education is like really difficult to get into, so I need to be prepared if it doesn't work out that well. Especially because I have to start developing a new style because, as you all know, anime is not always welcome in certain schools, so yeah. <laughs> The one thing, however, that surprised me the most is how some students in our class were not aware how the preparatory school was gonna be, because some of us were actually complaining how we didn't really get very far with something, or they didn't realize how insane the schedule was going to get, because the schedule is every day kind of different, like technically seen, Every day is supposed to start from 9.15 till 5 p.m., more or less. But depending on how the day goes, sometimes we get off earlier, sometimes we get off later. Then there was one time where we had to get up earlier for no good reason, because the trees didn't need that long to be stacked up on the parking lot. Like, what the hell? I woke up an entire two hours earlier for this bullshit. But yeah, it's a bit of a mess. And some were surprised how sometimes the classes can get a bit boring. And this is a bit of a weird complaint to me. Like, look, I'm not saying that you're not allowed to criticize a school you like. But that's the problem. Some of them don't like the school. And I feel like, I think at this point you can say that art school, or at least the dream to become an art student or something, has become kind of the same thing as wanting to study psychology. It sounds nice, it sounds like something you can maybe do easily because there's no math involved, which is wrong by the way, my brother can confirm that, but then you get the cold realization that there is a bit more to it than just that one thing you thought was all you needed to know about this kind of field. And look, I'm not gonna pretend I love everything about the school. Software, for example, is just awful for me, honestly. And I really don't like talking about politics that we had to do at some point. But those are like small things that I was prepared to when I went into that school. And I just realized most of us just weren't prepared for this kind of environment and this kind of feeling that you need to work on something that you need to do. Like, obviously, some of them are like 16 as mentioned already and don't really have a goal yet what to do. And look, I was like that with 16 too. I didn't even know I wanted to do anything art related until I was in high school drawing all those cringy Undertale comics. But it surprises me how many just feel out of place there. Really showing that they kind of underestimated what kind of place it was gonna be. And I don't want to sound like I was completely prepared about everything either. Like, I didn't know how much of a hell thing InDesign was gonna be. But I was just really surprised how many with such creative potential start to just not see the point in going into that school. And that, I don't know, it's kind of sad. But yeah, I think the school is great. I just have to 
start really thinking about what I can do other than being an illustrator so that I have a safe plan. But other than that, I'm honestly happy where I am right now. So I don't know if I'm ever going to make an update video on my art school, but I do plan on making a video one day about my driving experiences. Holy crap! <laughs> But the video is already getting way too long. I checked already many times when I had to interrupt the recording and realized that this video is gonna get a lot longer than expected. So yeah, that's gonna be fun to edit. And lastly, just, just a small thing to mention. I don't know when I'm gonna open commissions again. I'm still working on that huge one. So if you're interested in commissions, maybe just be on the lookout if I make any updates. I'm also thinking about maybe upping up the prices just a small tiny bit. Not really sure about it yet. So yes, the Steven Universe movie was great, the art school is great, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I don't know when the next video is gonna come out, probably in like maybe another month or maybe even longer. I can't confirm when the next video is gonna come out, but I'll try to not stay away from YouTube too long. Because after all, even though I really don't like certain editing programs and stuff, I do enjoy the process of editing to a certain extent. Well, with the skill level I'm at, at least. <laughs> So yeah, just be on the lookout, maybe watch some other videos and stuff. Check my Twitter out if you miss me and want to see some random sketches I do once in a while. I hope you're having a good day, and well, see you next time.